Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment the Line Up. Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in the great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. up a couple of men who were seen in that area. One of them knows Dr. Simpson. Who is he? And I want you to identify him. Tell me if he's the same man you saw walking up and down in front of the house. Oh, I hope you got him. Dr. Simpson was such a fine man. I'm sure he was. I worked for him for 15 years. I don't think he had an enemy in the world. Well, he must have had one. Somebody killed him. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the line. For refreshment while you work, for enjoyment anytime, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. The delicious, long-lasting, real mint flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The good, smooth chewing helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So indoors, outdoors, at work or at play, enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Wrigley's Spearmint. Refreshing. Delicious. We now return you to Sergeant Matt Grab and the lineup. I'll call off a number, then name and charge. If you have any questions or identification, please remember the number of signs of the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice. So do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, keep it moving, boys. Right over here to the end of the stage. That's it. Now turn and face front, hands to your side. Now when I call you, step out and talk up so everybody in the room can hear you. Okay, number one, Robert Mockler, robbery. Where do you live, Robert? 1745 10. What's your business? Well, Pipe City. Who do you work for? I'm not working. I used to work for Acme. You have a car? I don't own one. Did you use a car on the job? Yeah. Well, what kind? The Henry J, new one. Where'd you get it? Used car a lot, so let me take it out for a demonstration. The job only took me 20 minutes. I had the car back in 30. What color was it? Light green. Good car. I'm thinking about getting one. Fred, you have to wait a few years. Yeah. All right, number two. Yusuf Letter. Assault. Where do you live, Yusuf? I didn't mean to hit him. He's my friend. Tell the people where you live, Yusuf. First Avenue, 6654, one quarter with my wife. She tell you I didn't mean to hit him. Where do you work? Steel mill. Open house. He's just a strong man. You had a fight in the bar. You have a first one in three weeks, Sergeant. You broke a man's jaw in three places. I hit him. But he was my friend. What'd you hit him with? Hit him with? My hand I hit him with. What do you think? My feet. Well, if he was your friend, why... I'm sure he's my friend, but we... We got drunk a little. That seems to be a habit with you. Just after work. What's the matter with that, Sergeant? 
couple drink after The water. drinks we don't care about, it's the broken jaw that makes us a little unhappy. It ain't yours. Could have been. I could have been in that bar. I gonna hit you? I don't even know you. Why I gonna hit you? All right, all right, Houston. Number three, Thomas Wilson, drunk and disorderly. Where do you live, Tom? A hotel, some joint on Fifth Street. I don't know the name, just moved in yesterday. It says here you live at uh, 409 West Adams. I lived there the day before yesterday, moved out. Why? My wife, she made too much noise. Your wife says you hit her? Big deal. Sure I belted her. You should have to listen to the racket she makes. You beat her up pretty bad. Ah, she just got sore because I moved out. Four years, the same sloppy kimono. Hair up and curlers. Always up and curlers. Looks like she just landed in a saucer. <laughs> Where are you drinking? I always drink when I'm home. Yap, yap all the time. I got to get oil so I don't hear it. And she hides the bottle and I got to tear the joint apart. And she yaps. So I belted it. Big deal. All right. <laughs> Number four, Everett Sweezy, loitering in suspicion. Where do you live, Everett? Lieutenant? My yeah, is that the man? Uh, you'll yeah, have to that's talk him. up, Everett. That's the Where's man that was in front of the house. Sergeant Graham? Uh, yes, Lieutenant. Hold number four for interrogation. You hungry? No, a little. Well, when we finish with this guy, let's get some dinner. Huh? Sure. Hi, Matt. Hello, Quack. <laughs> Get a load of that tie, Ben. What's the matter with it? Are you kidding? Easter's a long way off, pal. I think it's very colorful. Ah, colorful. <laughs> <laughs> How's Sweezy? Yeah, just like his name sounds. Funny little guy. Reminds me of a rabbit. Well, we'll have a talk with him. Are we going to need me? No. Why not, Ben? That tie would scare Rasputin into a confession. <laughs> well, that's funny. <laughs> Go get yourself some dinner. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Sweezy. Hello, Lieutenant. Sergeant. Why am I here? You think I've done something? We just want to ask you a few questions. I was just out walking and a policeman arrested me. Why did I get arrested? I haven't done anything. Do you always take walks at 4 o'clock in the morning? I like to think. I take walks and I can think. I'm all alone and walking helps. It's peaceful early in the morning. You do it often? Oh, yes. There's nothing the matter with that. What's wrong with that? Do you know a Dr. Simpson? Hmm? Dr. Simpson, do you know him? A Dr. Simpson. No, I don't know him. Well, he was the doctor who operated on your wife. My wife? She's dead. Yes. We're sorry. I live with my sister now. I couldn't live in the house anymore. Jeanette's dresses hanging in the closet. Dr. Simpson? Yes. You were arrested five blocks away from the doctor's house. I don't know. But he operated on your wife. My wife's dead. Could I have a glass of water? Sure, man. Sure. I don't feel very well. Yeah. I haven't been well for a long time. Yeah, what's been the trouble? Headaches. My stomach's been upset, too. I haven't been able to sleep. I don't know. I guess I'm sick. There you are. Thank you. Is it a clean glass? Well, sure it is. So many germs. I'm very careful. I have so many colds. Thank you. Water tastes funny. If you haven't been feeling so well, Mr. Sweezy, uh, why don't you go to see a doctor? Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'll clean it up. You're liable to cut yourself. Be careful. It's okay. I'm terribly sorry. Don't worry about it. Mr. Sweezy, Dr. Simpson was killed this morning around 3.30... I feel just terrible. Couldn't I lie down for a while, please? I've got a bad headache. I'll just dump this in the way. You can lie down as soon as we finish talking to you. But I don't know anything. I haven't done anything. Dr. Simpson's servant saw you hanging around the neighborhood yesterday afternoon. I don't know where I was yesterday afternoon. I went walking. Dr. Simpson was killed in his car in front of his house at 3.30 the next morning. I've got such a bad headache. Could I have another drink, please? No glass. The doctor was shot through the head with a thirty-two caliber automatic. I'm just too tired to talk anymore. I feel so bad. My back aches. Well, why don't you tell us about it? Then you can sleep. I can't tell you anything. I uh, just want to lie down for a while. Uh, I'll be all right then, and you uh, can talk to me. Look, Dr. Simpson operated on your wife. You were at the hospital. We checked. I'm going to be sick. Catch him. 
Oh, I guess he really is sick. Yeah? Everett's sister, Miss Sweezy. Okay. We'll go right in, Miss Sweezy. Uh, how do you do, Miss Sweezy? Hello. Sit down, please. This is Sergeant Graham. How do you do? How do you do? How is Everett? He's in the infirmary. He said he was sick. Why was he arrested, Lieutenant? Suspicion. What does that mean? Did you know Dr. Simpson? Yes. Yes, I knew him. When Sergeant Crine talked to you this afternoon, you said that Dr. Simpson operated on your brother's wife. Yes. Mr. Crine said Dr. Simpson had been killed... Is that why you arrested Everett? Your brother was seen loitering in front of the doctor's house. Everett takes walks. Yes, we know that. He was probably just walking. Well, uh, tell us something about your brother. Well, there's nothing much to tell. He's always been sensitive. He paints. He's never really been well since he was a child, but he's a gentle person. You don't think he'd kill anyone? Oh, of course not. He was very fond of his wife? Oh, yes, yes. They'd been married for some time. He really hasn't been the same since she died. She uh, died of cancer, didn't she? Yes. Oh, it was a terrible thing. Everett suffered almost as much as she did. And then when she died, well, it was almost too much. Mm -hmm. And uh, he moved in with you? Yes. He put his house up for sale. Or rather, I should say, I did. Everett just wouldn't think about it. Did he ever say anything about Dr. Simpson? Say what? Well, maybe that he... You might have felt that the doctor was responsible for his wife's death. Oh, no, 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 most certainly not. Everett wouldn't do anything. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, can I see you? Uh, excuse me. Uh, yes, certainly. Now, what is it? Everett Sweezy. He just tried to hang himself. Doctor? No, I think so, but you've got yourself a problem. Oh, what do you mean? He needs mental therapy. Well, that was obvious right after we picked him up. Now, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I say he was very definitely paranoia. And if he did kill someone, I don't think he was responsible. Well, we have to find out if he did first. Mm -hmm. Then what? Mm, that's a good question. Hi, Ben. Hi. Any statement? No, I hasn't said two words. Everett? Everett? Mm hmm. Lieutenant Guthrie wants to talk to you. Mm -mm. No, I'm too tired. Everett. I don't want him in here. He means Quine. He wants to write down what I say. I don't want him in here. Quine. Okay. I don't want him listening outside, writing down what I say. If I go to sleep, I might say things. What things, Everett? I don't want him listening. Well, he, he's not. He's, he's gone. I want the doctor. Where's the doctor? Uh, right here. I don't feel good. I'm sick. Give me something that will make me sleep. No, certainly. What's the matter with me? I've got such bad headaches. I ache all over. You'll be all right, Everett. Doctor. Yes, I'm coming. There. You'll sleep now. Uh, thank you. Lieutenant. Yeah? I don't care now. It doesn't really make any difference. What doesn't? That I killed Dr. Simpson. I killed him. He killed Jeanette, and I killed him. Oh, I feel so terrible. I'm glad I'm going to sleep now. Refreshment while you work, for enjoyment anytime, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. When your mouth feels dry, when you're warm or tired, Wrigley's Spearmint is really refreshing. The lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, freshens your taste. And the chewing itself gives you a little lift, helps you feel your best and do your best. So for chewing enjoyment plus pleasant refreshment, chew delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum.
Ben. Good morning. Hi. Did you get some sleep? You know it, like I was dead. Oh, me too. They moved Everett this morning, County Hospital. Psychiatric warrant? Yeah, about an hour ago. I'm glad that's over with. Yeah. Well, I'll have some breakfast and make out a report. You eat at home? Just coffee. Molly had to take the kids to the park, some kind of a carnival or something. Sunday school's throwing it. Uh-huh. Hey, Eddie. Hey. Yes. How about two in the water, four minutes and some sausages? Right, man. Double it, Eddie. Double it. Uh, will you give me some coffee now? Right, man. A cigarette? Thanks. No, I smoked enough last night to give the city a smart problem. <laughs> Hi, right, Quine. Have some coffee? Well, he changed the tower. I hate to do it, boys. Oh, now, look. This is too hot. We haven't even had our coffee. Find us in a half an hour. It's huh? ever Sweezy. Yeah, what about him? They were just taking him into the county hospital. He slugged the guard. Got away. Who thinks up the names for streets? Yeah, you're one of the strangest things sometimes. What's that number again? 224. It's the next block. You think Everett just came home and went to bed? I doubt if he's that far off his rocker. Poor sister sounded scared to death on the phone. Everybody's scared of cops. I can't understand it. I'm such a nice fellow, really. Ha! Huh. Are out. Yeah. Maybe she's watching television. Let's try the bank. Yeah, there's a light in there. See anything? Yeah. Fine way to treat your sister. Come on. Huh? Better bust a window. All right. Give me a boost. All right. Come in. I'll untie her. You take a look around. Right. I'll have you loose in a minute, Miss Squeezy. Yeah. There, there we are. Oh. Oh. Now, don't try to talk just yet. Just oh. let me get your arms, legs free. Everett, he's gone mad. You've got to no, there, help there. him, please. Here, let, oh. let me help you up. All right. All right, sit here. Now, oh, Miss Sweezy, where's your brother? I don't know. I don't know. He was here when you called, but I couldn't tell you. He was like a crazy here, man. man. He... Now, just tell us what happened. He was here when you called. He was standing right over me with a gun. I was so frightened. Did he say where he was going? I'd have told you he was here, but I was so frightened. He was standing right beside me with a gun. That's why he came here, to get his now, gun. Now, please, do you know where he went? Yes, yes, I, I'm trying to tell you. He went to kill Dr. Hanley. That's why he came for the gun. I, I wanted to tell you on the well, phone. Well, uh, but... who's Dr. Hanley? What's his first name? His first name is John. John Hanley. He said he was going to kill now, him. Get on the phone. Uh, where's your phone? In the hall. Uh, call when Dr. Call John me, Hanley. Said... Tell him not to leave the house. Get the address and tell him we'll be right there. Right. Oh, please, don't leave me. What if he comes back? What'll I do if he comes back? He won't come back, Miss Sweezy. Now, department. please, try to calm down. I'll send one of our men over to stay with you. I've seen it coming ever since Jeanette died. I could hear him crying. Did Dr. Oh, Hanley uh, take care of Everett's wife? Oh, he did everything Hello. he could for Jeanette. He Hello. took care of her the Dr. best Dr. he Hanley. could. I tried to tell what? Everett when he came for the gun. Well, we'll stop him, Miss Sweezy. Now, please, oh, please Dr. take... Oh, Dr. is a fine doctor. He's taken Thank care of me much. for years. Uh, well, the doctor's out on the call. Ben, his wife said, though, we better get going. But I'm alone here. And if they took my car, he might come back. What will I do if he comes back? There'll be a policeman here in five minutes. And now, look, don't worry. We'll stop Everett before he does any more harm. Oh, yes. Please. But don't hurt him. Try not to hurt him. Please. Yes? We're the police, Mrs. Hanley. You're the police? Why, I... Oh, come in, won't you? Thank you. Have you been able to locate your husband? Why, yes. I just told one of your men where to find him. You did what? Please tell me what's wrong. This is all very disturbing. Mrs. Hanley, we're the ones who called you. But a man came to the door just a few minutes ago. Did he say he was from the police? Well, I just assumed it. 
Well, that is, I, I asked him if he was the officer that called, and he said yes. What did he look like? Oh, he was small and slender. That's every... Yeah. Where's your husband, Mrs. Hanley? He's making a call on Arden Road, 1456 Arden. Do you know the phone number there? Well, they have no phone. You've got to tell me. Is John in trouble? Who was that man? Well, it's nothing serious, Mrs. Hanley. We're just checking on the next patient of the doctor's. Oh, I see. But who was the man who came here? The ex-patient. Come on, Matt, let's go. KQRA from 13J. KQRA. Code 5 at 1456 Arden Road. Suspect armed and dangerous. KQRA. Roger. I felt lucky at night. That timing's off, man. Yeah, yeah. How much further? Oh, a few blocks. You know, doctors sure lead a rough life. Molly's uncle's a doctor. Poor guy never gets any rest. We go over there for dinner once in a while, and he's never made it through his dessert yet. Always gets called away. I don't know how to keep going. Got a cigarette? Yeah. I'll light it. Here. You know, it's nice having a doctor in the family. When Molly was sick last year, her uncle took care of her. It didn't cost me a nickel. Except for the medicine. Uh, here we are. All oh, relax, will you? That's fine. Glad you're here. Oh, this is a pip. We we're already on our way here when we got your call. Please, you've got to do something. You've got to get him out of there. Uh, this is Mr. Stafford. He put in a call for us. That guy in there is crazy. He says he's going to kill the doc. You've got to get him out of there. He's got a gun. My kid is awful sick, and that lunatic in there in there's with a gun. Now, take it easy, Mr. Stafford. What happened? Well, my kid took sick tonight, and I called Dr. Hanley. A few minutes after he got here, this, this crazy guy comes to the door and says he's looking for the doc. I, I told him the doc was with my kid, so he pulls out a gun and goes on in. I ran to the corner gas station and called the cops. I see. Well, now, is there anyone else in the house? Well, no, there's just my kid and me. Get that guy out of there, will you? Now, which room is it? Uh, that one there on the ground floor where the light is. All right, now, you stay out here, Mr. Stafford. We'll get him out. Come on, man. you got to do something. You think we'd better go in? This guy's liable to keep it quiet. Okay. What for, Dr. Henley? So you can let him die? Oh, please, Everett, try to understand. How come you're so anxious to make people live, Doctor? How come you care whether he lives or not? I wasn't responsible for Jeanette's death, Everett, any more than Dr. Simpson was. Th there was nothing any of us could do. You, you must believe me. You told me you could save her. Dr. Simpson said the operation would save her. Why did you let her die? Why did you tell me you wouldn't let her die? Oh, Everett, please. I, I, I'll try to explain to you about your wife. I, I'll try to make you see that there was no way to save her. But don't let this boy die. Let me take him to the hospital. Then you and I can talk. I don't want to talk about Jeanette anymore. I don't want to see her face anymore. I don't want to hate you anymore. I'm going to kill you, Doctor. Jeanette wants me to kill you. What do we do? All right. See if there's another door into this room. Maybe uh, from the room down the hall. I can to the boy. Give me just a few minutes. Okay. But don't do anything wrong to him. Be sure you do the right thing. Go ahead. Help him. I'll need my bag. Where are you going, Doctor? You're not leaving here. It's right here on the chair. Yes, Captain, what have you got in that There's another way in. The bathroom connects this bedroom and the other one. What's Good. the matter with you? You go around through the bathroom. Count ten Please. from the time Everett. you leave here, Let then open the door and cover me. His condition right. is very acute. Now, now. Go ahead. One, one, Give him the two, shot. Three, I'm not going to wait four, much longer. Five, Everett, six. Take me out of here before you. Eight. At least nine, take me to a phone. Let me call. Drop it, Everett. Stop that. Thank the Lord. Call an ambulance, man. Let's get him to the hospital. He's on the third floor, Ben. 312. Okay. Did uh, Gerson do the operation? Yeah. Said we didn't get him here any too soon. Hmm. Laura, please. Uh, three, please. He was on the table for two hours. Yeah? Well, if he pulls through this, it'll be one for the books. Mm-hmm. Well, if Dr. Hanley hadn't been there, he wouldn't have had a prayer. Third floor. I hope 
hope he's conscious. Yeah. Wonder what he'll have to say. Yes? That uh, police, miss. Is he awake? Yes, but he's not too strong. We'll only be a minute. Hello, Everett. Hello, Lieutenant. Tell me, please. Am I going to live? Did you talk to the doctor? You've got a good chance. The doctor did a good job. Is this the same hospital Jeanette was in? Well, I don't know, Everett. Uh, find out for me, will you? I have to know. I'm scared. Okay, I'll find out. If it is the same, I don't want to stay here. Now, look, you better not talk anymore. Lieutenant, mm. how's the kid? The little boy, is he still sick? No, no, he's fine over it. The doctor removed his appendix, and he's going to be fine. I'm glad. I didn't want him to die. But, uh, Lieutenant, come closer, please. Yes, Everett? He still may die. If Dr. Henley takes care of him, you mustn't let Dr. Henley take care of him. Dr. Henley killed my wife, you know. Remember, friends, for refreshment while you work, for enjoyment anytime, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. There's lots of lively, real mint flavor in it to cool your mouth, freshen your taste, and sweeten your breath. And chewing Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you fresh and alert. You feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. So indoors, outdoors, at work or at play, always keep delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. For refreshment while you work, for enjoyment anytime, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. The lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? <laughs> You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of a suspect, have him held. The officers have took your name. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb, was written by Charles E. Israel and edited by Blake Edwards and Richard Quine, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Parley Bear, I Averback, Jay Novello, Peter Leeds, Junius Matthews, Virginia Gregg, Jean Bates, and Mary Jane Croft. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.